Join us here at Last Adam Tabernacle as we bring Christ to the nation. Thank you, Sam. Glory be to God. Good to see all of you. Uh, yes, good to see uh, Bob. Uh, yeah. Where's Anne? She's not here. Yeah. Is she here? No? Okay. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, worship team. I'm going to buy these guys lunch today. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is assuming that your lunch is not more than 5,000 shillings each person. <laughs> Hallelujah. If it is more than 5K per person, we shall talk. Okay? I mean, there are hospitals where you can go, consultation fee, medicine, 24,000. What about lunch? Those places are also what? They are there. Glory be to God. They are what? They are there. Yeah. I and Andrew know those places. Don't we? Yeah, I and Andrew what? <laughs> know what? Those places which, uh, yeah. I don't know if I should take my wife there once. Yeah, but those places are what? And the, they are very healthy food. Okay? There's someone who wrote and said you know, the lessons we should learn from the pandemic, well, which has gone by. It's, and and he gave like 10 points of things we should have learned or we should learn uh, from it. And one of the points was we should learn that, uh, that many of the poor are more healthy than the rich. All right? Many of the poor are more <laughs> healthy than the rich. Okay? Very few poor guys got COVID and went down. You understand? Eh? That's why they were wondering why you are looking down the country, you yellow party guys. Okay? Because most of you were scared of dying hmm? because you're very unhealthy. Okay? You don't eat healthy. You're always in what? Land cruisers, V8. My wife wants a V8. All right? So those, that food, eh? very, very what? Healthy. Just make sure that when you eat it, eat it when it's hot. Okay, when it's hot, because that heat temperature will have killed the what? The germs, you what? Yeah, hallelujah. But it's very good food. Very, very what? Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Very, very. And you see those places, when you go and you eat from there, it, it gives for... Uh, some of you, eh, it gives you an opportunity to really get to understand what is happening in the real Uganda. You understand? Eh? When you rub your shoulders with Omuntua Wansi, you understand? Eh? When you hear their cabos, their worries, their... and whether you might get info about this country, which you won't get on what? On NBS and UBC. Those guys usually have what? Some serious info. But you should be careful with it. Amen? Most of it is just, you know, just, yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah, every one of you who's, uh, yeah, who's living above a certain level, always pray to God to give you opportunities eh, to, to deal with uh, the people in the lower strata, eh? of life. Do you understand? And by the way, that will help you. It will humble you. Okay? If, if you have a good heart. Alright? It will, and it will also cause you to be, to appreciate what God has done for you. Do you understand? Eh? Okay? Most of you are doing well, but you're complaining. You're, but you're doing well eh, compared to some people. Eh? Compared to the majority of Ugandans. You're doing very well. Okay? So now, when you get an opportunity to meet those guys and to sit with them and to realize how they are living, man, eh, you will even be embarrassed, okay, by the complaining you've been doing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen? 
Yeah. Does this man know I want to bow and see? <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And you see, like I said, that uh, group of people is actually the rule Uganda. Because they're the majority. Do you understand? Eh? This now guru here, what? Eh? This is not the rule, what? Eh, you can't bring your friend from Canada. Then you say, I want to show you Uganda, no later in a guru. That's a lie, man. You understand? Eh? Eh, you have deceived them. Okay? Yeah. And when you see that, then you can pray to God and, and, and you are like, how can I help? Eh? How can I be a part of making people's lives better? Glory be to God. Not like this, uh, the economic uh, uh, situation in the country. Okay? Like every time, man, I'm like, God, what is my part? What can I do? What can I do? Okay, what is my part? Like, how can I contribute to bettering what is happening? You know, eh? Of course, I'm not sure whether God will give me a, a billion dollars to give to people free, you know, eh? But, you know, he can show you just one person. They're like that one. Give them the 20K you have. And in that way, you have contributed. Glory be to God. To making life better for people. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Visitors, you're welcome. All right. I see like, like three. I see a young gentleman behind there. What's your name? And, okay. Titus. Okay. It's not a Titus, I know. Okay, you know masks, <laughs> all right? Yeah, but there's no COVID, yeah, but you can keep your mask on. Oh, that's... <laughs> I know him, but you know a, a mask? He's my nephew, okay? <laughs> you know masks, okay? In fact, during the pandemic, man, you would pass a guy who owes you money. You've been looking for him, you know? <laughs> so guys were what? We're ducking behind masks. A guy you've been looking for to give you your money would pass you by. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, and there's a lady there. Uh, your Carlos friend, you're welcome. Amen. And there's a lady here. You're welcome. Are you Ghana? Nigeria. Hey, let's give a big hug up today. <laughs> yeah. Glory be to God. Yes, you are dressed like one, so, so I suspected. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Now, um, yeah, now you forgive me, okay? Since Wednesday, okay, I sought God for what to talk about today. All right? Talked about, like, I went, I did even a sermon on faith, you know, eh? But yesterday, I mean, things jumped. I couldn't feel the life, you understand? All the scriptures were there. Okay, good stuff. All right, but I just felt, uh, I, it's not that. All right? So now you forgive me. Apologies. I felt by, by the time I went to bed last night, I felt the Lord wanted me to continue what we talked about last uh, Sunday. Okay? And let God multiply your what? Money. Glory be to God. I'm really sorry that this is coming back, what? Again. Hallelujah. And you can see I really was looking to talk about something else. Amen? <laughs> However, yeah, I just, when I thought about this, I just felt excited in my heart. And I was like, okay, we're going to talk about that again. And what we're going to talk about is very simple stuff. You know these things. Hallelujah. You know what? You know these things. God, by the way, is not in the business. Anyway, you know these things. Amen? You know these things. Hallelujah. So we're going to talk about let God multiply your money. Okay? We're going to talk about that again. Glory be to God. And what inspired me to talk about this last week was uh, the dream I had that Thursday. 
okay, which I shared with you. And in that dream, my wife and I had acquired a second house in Luboa. Glory be to God. Okay, I'd acquired a second house in Luboa. Then, uh, Apostle Joseph Serada, you all know him. Uh, maybe the Nigerian doesn't. Okay. Yeah, but there's some, some man in this country. He's born again. He came and told me that that means St. Zigenda calls the Sebuamu. Okay? Which is a Luganda phrase, which means that your money is going to be multiplied. All right? So that also means that God is going to multiply my money. Okay? God is going to give me more money with which we shall use to acquire a house in Luboa. Glory be to God. All right? Uh, then I came here that Thursday and I shared that uh, dream. Then our prophet, okay, prophet Dr. Dennis Mujimba, the spokesperson for Ministry of Education. <laughs> Man, I don't envy you what? Yeah, but you see, it has given him an opportunity to learn Luganda. Have you heard him what? Jazzing Luganda on TV. Man, it's superb. You know, so because now he has to explain to Abantuba one C. As in people whose kids are going UPE, you understand? Eh? Now he has to just with them, to explain to them what is happening, what are you going to do. Okay, and most of them, especially in this, uh, in central Uganda, okay, they, they are Uganda speakers, so glory be to God. In med school, when we were with him in uh, medical school, I never heard that guy speak in Uganda. Now his job <laughs> requires him to explain stuff to Avantu Bawansi, which, and the, the majority, glory be to God. Hallelujah. God is what? And now that has helped him because now they can eh, communicate better with his Muganda wife. Glory be to God. Mushtegela, <laughs> as in, God is very, very good. <laughs> he knows how to ask. To help people, <laughs> okay, to make even their uh, marriages better. Amen? Say amen. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, Dennis had, so any, when I came and I shared my dream, which was too good to be true, but I was like, ah, come and buy and buy. Okay, it is true, you know, it is of God. So I shared it, and then Dennis later, he told me that he had a dream the same morning, okay? When I had a shot on me, and then someone came and gave me and put on me an identical shirt, another shirt, identical to the one I already had on. Glory be to God. Dennis's dream, of course, was confirming my dream. His was a symbolic who, who dream, but because God knew that it would be hard for me eh, to believe eh, that I'm going to get a house in Uluboa, God was like, let me confirm it. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? So that was on uh, Thursday. Okay? So, anyway, so from that, that's where the inspiration of, of talking about God multiplying your money who came from. Okay? Hallelujah. Now, uh, on Wednesday, Wednesday it was, yes, okay, a few days ago, I decided to make a trip to Luboa, okay? I really didn't know the place, but all I, all I, had, all I had heard about it was that, man, it is a posh place. It is a rich place. It is a wonderful place. Okay, I was last there like 15 years ago, long time ago, and just to see someone's proto, like you understand. So I really did, you know. Now, 15 years later, you okay, because I said, like, okay, God wants 
to give me a house in Uluboa. Let me go there and see this place. Hallelujah. Man, eh? How many of you guys have been to uh, Luboa? Okay? Okay? Carol, you haven't been there. Why? You don't like the place? What? <laughs> you don't like Kabantu Bawa Guru? <laughs> Man, eh, you guys, eh, you should make a trip to Uluboa. That place is nice. Glory be to God. It is nice. I burnt fuel. This is not a season to burn what? Fuel. But as I drove there, I was like, God, all right? <laughs> yeah, I am burning this fuel, I'm, you know, but for a noble cause. You're the one who told me about it. So I have to go and see the place, all right? Man, the place is wonderful, okay? All places in Kampala, they have a section, and I don't know how it comes about. They have a section for, like, People who have little, okay? Then, and usually, it's a road that divides them. Usually, it's a road. I don't know how that happened. Eh? Yeah, but anyway, I don't know how it happened, eh? okay? There's a section for people who have little, okay? I know that God hasn't blessed them. Some of them are there, God has blessed them, and according to him, you know, and they're happy, by the way, very grateful. Then, there's a, across the road, there's a section for guys who have too much, or who have much, all right? Even in Entebbe, there's a thing like that. There's Entebbe, what, then you went Entebbe, Chitor, or what, anyway, you know, eh? Yeah, much in your mugaga, much in your, you know, eh? Chihuahua, it's the same thing. Naguru, it's the same thing. All places, now. I went around the entire Luboa village, okay? There is no place eh, for guys who have little. It's not there, okay? I first drove around myself, all right? Then I, I went, had lunch with a guy I drove with, okay? Then we got a border guy, okay, we went. By the way, there's one border border stage. No, we're not we're talking about an, like an, uh, whatever, like a section of a village, like some area. No, no, no. I'm talking about an entire village called Uluboa. Like how you'd say, Chiwa Tule Yona Yona. There is no section for Abantu Bawansi. They're not there. Do you understand? I was amazed. Eh? There's, no, there's one border border stage, and it is inside quality shopping village, I think it is called. It is not outside on the road. It is inside. It is the only border border stage in the entire village. All right? There's some of you who shouldn't stay there. <laughs> but it's a joke, eh? okay? And you see, now like me, I love eating boiled uh, maize from these women who walk around with what? With, eh. But I realize, man, now, they take you there. Going to suffer, man. Eh? My wife wouldn't suffer, though. No, eh? they are not there. They are not there. Okay? So anyway, so we got a border guy. We told him, we drive, eh? uh, you know, we ride, and for us, we drive. Eh? You fo we follow you. So just take us around the entire place. You enter all the lanes, all the closes. Eh? We did that. Man, eh? that place is nice. Glory be to God. It is nice. Hallelujah. Okay? So I was amazed, eh? okay, that man, eh? that is where God is saying that he's going to give us a second house. Hallelujah. Okay? Um, yeah, and so... When I returned home that day, because I didn't trade the Bible uh, in the morning, I decided to, you know, to do the sections I needed to read for the day. Okay? Then as I began to read, I came across a scripture which I thought the Lord was speaking to me concerning the trip I had made. Okay? And that is in Exodus chapter 6, verse 4. 
Okay? Okay? Exodus chapter 6, verse 4. It says, okay, so God is speaking to Moses, and he tells him that, I have also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan. Remember, it was the land of promise, eh? the promised land. Okay, to give them the land of Canaan, the land of their pilgrimage in which they were strangers. Glory be to God. Okay, so I, man, I, I knew God was speaking to me from this verse. Okay, concerning the trip, the pilgrimage I had made to Luboa, okay, the land he had promised to, the land in which he had promised to give us a house, okay, the land I had been a stranger in that day. Glory be to God. And God told me that I have established my covenant, okay, to give you the land of Luboa. Hallelujah. The land where you made a trip. Glory be to God. The land where you were a stranger on Wednesday. Hallelujah. Man, eh? Now, Dennis's dream was so important eh? because, eh, first of all, <laughs> there is not so much land left there. NSSF decided to go and buy acres and acres of land. All right? The other plots which are, uh, well, they haven't uh, built, okay? Osangao Busain Land not for sale. Trespassing prohibited. Do you understand? Eh? Okay. And, the, I mean, a small pieces of land are going for more than 300 million shillings. Do you understand? Eh? Now, how does Moses Musinguzi, eh? as in, do you understand? Eh? But God is so good. How is going to pull that off? That is his business. All right? But he says he's going to multiply my money. Okay? I was talking to my wife uh, about that uh, trip I'd made and telling her about the place. Then she said something remarkable. She said that, man, eh, now, the good thing now with that one is that the, like, there's no room for worry. Okay? Because it is way beyond your reach. Do you understand? Can now worry for <laughs> you, you know, eh? It's another thing if there's a plot of land you want to get and it is at least say 10 million shillings and you have six. Now that can cause you to worry. Where am I going to get the four? I know if I don't get the four now, someone else is going to come and take that land, or next year the price will have gone up. Do you understand? Eh? Can I call Uncle Swan so who stays in Uluboa to give me a soft loan? Eh? You, you know, eh? Uh, so she said, no, for that one, eh? worry for what? Do you understand? Eh? And she's like, man, that is a good bit about it. Because it is completely, strictly God's business. Hallelujah. Amen. When I thought about this, God's uh, goodness, it reminded me of uh, David, okay? In 2 Samuel chapter 7, okay? God, uh, yeah, through Nathan, he talks to David and tells him that, you know, a time when you've died, okay, your son, okay, will become king, king after you, eh? okay? And his throne will be established Forever, okay? So, Second Samuel, chapter 7, okay, it says that, when your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seed after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. Okay? Next passage. So it says that then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O sovereign Lord, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? 
He's a Mukama once Jawala. Voice again, no fool, no fool. Eh? You made me president, eh? king. Okay, okay, you have, you know, he says, What is my family that you have brought me this far? And if this were not enough in your sight, O sovereign Lord, you have also spoken about the future of the house of your servant. Is this your usual way of dealing with man, O sovereign Lord? Do you understand? Eh? He said, hey, is this your usual way of dealing with man? As in, like he was amazed. Eh? Glory be to God. Amen. Okay, is this your usual way? You know, eh? Do you understand what that means? Eh? When someone says, hey, as in, are those your ways? Do you bless people that much? Glory be to God. Okay, and he continued and said, what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O sovereign Lord. For the sake of your word, and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made it known to your servant. Okay? Then he says, how great you are, O sovereign Lord. There is none like you, and there is no God like you, as we have heard with our own ears. Glory be to God. How great, we sang a song like that, okay? How great are you, okay? Oh, how great you are, O sovereign Lord. There is none like you. Hallelujah. These things of saying that Allah is great, eh? okay? That's a big lie. First of all, okay, Allah is not God. Okay? I hope you know that. These things of saying, hey, no, you're the same God, what? Let not religion divide you. You worship the same God. Okay? It's a big lie. Allah is not what? Allah is some demon, some, you know, eh? Okay? It is a demon. Hallelujah. Okay? Allah is not what? And Allah is not great. Okay? Allah, what? You know, those things, shouting for people everywhere. Okay? Allah is not great. There is only one great God. First of all, there is one God. Okay? And he's great. Glory be to God. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. The guys who are trying to come up with a one world religion. Okay? Yeah, now they, they want to get Muslims and Christians together. Hmm? It is something called Chrislam. You've heard of it? I think Rick Warren was behind, was involved in it. That Rick Warren guy. Okay? Rick Warren. As in, he's a fake guy. Hallelujah. Okay? He's a what? Anyway, you don't have to agree, man. Yeah, but according to me, he's a fake guy. So, so, yes, so it's called Chrislam. Christianity and, and Islam. Okay? Okay? And I think they try to get Judaism in there. Because they say, you know, you're all, you, you, you all believe in the Abrahamic faith. Okay? Because remember, Islam was started by Arabs, okay, who are descended from Abraham. Then Judaism, okay, is uh, for the Jews who are descended from Abraham. Then Christians, huh? Christianity is for everyone who believes in Jesus, or Christ, who descended from Abraham. Just come together, yeah, you worship Allah, you worship Jehovah, but you all, Abraham, so it's a big lie, eh? it's a big what? Don't fall for those things. Eh? Okay, which reminds me, eh? uh, this last week, there's a footballer from PSG. You know PSG? These, these young guys know PSG. A footballer, so I think uh, May or April, May is a day for gays, eh? rather a month. Okay, so now, there's a certain match where they were all, I think, supposed to wear those gay 
colors. Yeah? Okay. PSG was supposed to wear, you know. They are uh, with jersey, but with those gay hair. Then some African, a Muslim, I think he's from Senegal, he jumped. He jumped. Now, that was good. Eh? But what, what hurts, hurt me or hurts me is that where are Christians? Christians, they should have been, because they are Christians in PSG. Okay? The last time I heard that Neymar, but you understand, eh? Any, even if they are not Balokole, born again, but where are they a Catholic? What? You understand? Eh? And not just in France, but they? they have been made to do stupid things over the years, things which they don't believe in. But because of money, they go ahead and do that stuff. Now, a Muslim man, eh? he, man he has caused the thing eh? in Europe. You understand? The whites, you know, they don't know what to do with this guy. A Muslim man. Now you, eh, how, now, you can't even preach to that guy now. Because like, you Christians, eh, you say you, you believe in uh, good morals, but now it's, do you know that it's so hard to preach to that guy to get saved? Because he has, he has uh, done what you're supposed to do. You should have done it a long time ago. Glory be to God. So I applaud him, but I'm saddened eh, that for all these many years, eh, Christians are just quiet. They are playing it safe. It is very sad. Eh? Now you can't tell that guy that what? Jehovah is great. The guy said, man, eh, as in, eh, you can't even tell the world what which Jehovah esteems as right. Hallelujah. Man, you guys, please stand up for truth. Eh? Hallelujah. Okay? In whichever way the Lord leads you. Glory be to God. Okay? Yeah. Don't do it like someone else. Eh? But God will... Because it's like... Anyway... You understand? Be a real Christian people. Hmm? Be what? Be Christians. Be Christians. Be Christians. Hallelujah. God is counting on you. God is counting. You know, the Bible says that you're the light of the world. You're the light of the world. Okay? Europe, eh, the light was snuffed out. Hallelujah. And one of the reasons is because Muslims, eh, okay, of course the Europeans became stupid, okay, then Islam eh, has entered in there and it has made things worse. Okay? Hallelujah. Be the what? Be the light. Okay? Elizabeth. <laughs> okay? That young girl is going to the States for school. Be the light. Okay, I remember when I was at school in the States, you know, there's an email with some fellow, I think he was the head of department of some whatever. He wrote and, and was saying that why God cannot be given like a professorship at a university. You know, eh? then he listed eh, all God's apparent failures. He failed in this, he failed in this. You know, eh? You know, eh? A head of department, a professor. And he's sending this mail to all the students, even the lecturers in the department. Man, eh? I was a foreigner, <laughs> I was a stranger <laughs> in that land, but I was like, I'm not letting this pass. Okay? So, I responded. You know, those things of Reply to all. <laughs> you understand? Eh? And I responded, and it went to all. Man. Eh? Okay? Then the professor, because I think he realized that now a controversy is going to begin, like an email. So the guy quickly sent like an apology, like, you, you know, eh? but it wasn't an apology. But he didn't want the campus to get into what? Chaos because what had happened is 
because of my response, I had caused some Christians who are darking to what? So the guy realized that things are going to be what? Okay. Then, man, eh? now you know, eh? then guys, they began to look at me with respect in class. Eh? You know, eh? in fact, I got a friend who took me to their church eh? for guys to see me in their church. Eh? Okay. And they're like, man, this is a guy. Okay. This is a guy. You know, who responded to a lecturer at Berkeley? Berkeley is the most liberal school in the United States. Do you understand? Eh? Do you know what it means to be a liberal in America? Okay? If you believe in abortion, if you believe in gay rights, if you believe in communism, socialism, all those things. Eh? Animal rights, what, you know, no eating animal, you know. Eh? <laughs> Berkeley is the school. Do you understand? Eh? So to respond, man, eh, guys, you know, eh? of course I'm sure there are some who wanted me out of there, what? Or country, eh? okay? But now, one of these, these, these Christian who was amazed and took me to their church and introduced me to, to their uh, pastor, okay, said that, you know, because you are a foreigner, okay, it makes more impact when you do a thing like that. You understand? Eh? Because they know this one is not a Republican, is not a Democrat. He's a foreigner and from Africa. And somehow, they know the truth. Eh? You know, everyone, the Bible says people have the knowledge of God in their hearts. Okay? And now, so they realize that now this one is not our enemy. Now, when they get, she said that you see what you did eh, made very big impact because you are a foreigner. Okay? So that one, no one can really outrightly fight you. And People get sense in their heads. Hallelujah. Those are, I think that's the only great thing I did for God while I was at school in the most liberal school in the world. Okay? The other things where I was a failure, man. I came back when I, I felt like, man, I had backslidden. Okay? I was so glad to come back home. Hallelujah. Okay? It's my opinion that, uh, you know, eh? but we, yeah. One day God will say, man, you are the best thing that ever happened that year in the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. But people, eh, stand up for Christ. Stand up for what? Stand up for Christ. Young people, okay? Stand up for what? For the Lord. The Lord is depending on you. The Lord is not depending on angels. Okay? Angels are there, first of all, to, to help you just. But if you're not doing right, they can't help. Glory be to God. And this is your sphere. Okay? Stand up for what? For the Lord. Glory be to God. Okay? But we stand up. And it stand up for what? For the Lord. Glory be to God. So, David was amazed at the goodness of God. He said, is this your usual way of dealing with man? Hallelujah. And then he says, God, you are what? You are great. Hallelujah. Amen? I encourage all of you, take a trip to Luboa. Amen? <laughs> it's a nice place. Hallelujah. Okay, and God wants to take Moses. Okay? Moses and Jiradin or Jiradin and Moses. Which is the what? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Women, you know. Yeah? Anyway, yeah. Okay? Geraldine and what? Moses. Okay? So I was asking, are we going to stay there? Okay? Because now, and you know, I just planted avocado in <laughs> Unsasa. Two trees. If one dies, you understand? Eh? Then I just planted two mango trees. <laughs> so like, is that going... You know, now, I don't know what God's science is. You know, eh? And, uh, and so I don't know. I don't know. Okay? We shall know. Okay? As we walk with him. Glory be. Eh? Yeah. So maybe Ulboa will be our village home. I don't know. <laughs> Glory be to God. 
Abigail gave a very good suggestion that we rent out the land and get money. You know, we rent out to get money. Okay? But I was like, go, uh, yeah, before, you, if you're to rent out the Leboa one, you need to first stay there at least for a month. You understand? Eh? But then anyway, God is what? God is good. And that. Now, eh, please, eh, God wants to do good to you also. Don't forget that. Eh? God is good to all. The Bible says he shows no partiality. Okay? He is good to what? He is good to all. Okay, now I'm not saying that everyone will get a house in what? I'm not saying that. Okay, but God will prove himself good to you. Hallelujah. In whichever way he chooses. God is what? God is a good God. Hallelujah. God is very, very good. Hallelujah. Amen? Don't forget that. Eh? Okay, very important. Eh? Because you always get the God eh, that you perceive. Okay? God is what? He's very good. Hallelujah. Amen? Now, remember, we are talking about multiplying money. Letting God multiply your money. Okay? Now, according to the Bible, there is only one way God multiplies money. Hmm? Do you know that God multiplies money? Huh? <laughs> A kid is like, what? This is too good, man. But I remember years ago, you know, I grew up, I was a sickly child growing up. Eh? For some reason, I think the devil knew what was, anyway, what was uh, coming. Anyway, even these scars, eh? it was an operation, and it was done twice. Okay, so this is when I was seven and I think eight. Okay? <clears throat> so, anyway, uh, yeah, so you know when you're in hospital, visitors come, eh? people come to uh, check on you, okay? They, they give your mother money, all right? Another child, you keep note because they say, <laughs> Zinocente, Zamuradi. All right? <laughs> so as a child, you know, remember you're seven years, you're seeing people coming every day giving your mother money. And you saw one time I'm discharged. Okay, so you go home. Then when you get home, I wanted, I think, a ball. So I told my mother, okay, to get from my money <laughs> and buy me a ball. Hey. I don't know if you had to know the response I got. Omani, a Uganda no muntu wawa nsile no time kwa kumu yevi yevi to my money. Hallelujah. And so it was to the effect that what do you think we are using in hospital? All right? That's when I realized, man, I didn't have any what? Oh, money. Okay? But that's not what I wanted to say about multiplying money. I remember there's a, a gentleman who came to see me in hospital. And they, be, and they just with my mom. Eh? Then I heard him say, that there's a place eh, somewhere in town. Now, he said it in Uganda, and I think it was maybe Conquat. Uganda, okay? Not like a phone, eh? okay? He said that, something like a simu, eh? Bajitunda sente. Eh? You understand, eh? But that say, you know, budget to understand the city. And so for me, my, my understanding was there's a place where they sell money. Do you understand? Eh? But to understand, then, they, then you say, city in GC. You know, eh? But to understand? Ay, ay, So as he talked and he gave my mom the direction where that place is, eh? I was picturing the place 
And I'm like, the moment I get this child, I'm going to go and look for that place where they sell money. So that I buy money. And you're wondering why people don't go and buy all the money. <laughs> so I remember when I got home, eh, I walked around the entire place looking eh, in every shop eh, to find out what? The one where they sell what? Money. And of course, you know eh, how the story what? ended. That shop has never been what? There. It has never existed. But God multiplies what? Money. Now, the only way that God multiplies money is when you give money generously. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10. God equates money to a seed. And when that money is given, okay, it means or it implies that seed has been sown. And it says that that seed gets multiplied. Okay, it says that now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food su supply and multiply the seed that you have sown. Okay, remember that seed is money or anything material that is given generously. Okay? And it is saying that when you give it generously, when you give it away, you have planted it, and God is going to multiply it. Glory be to God. Okay? Visitors, this verse is not saying that you give me money. Hallelujah. Okay? Hallelujah. So I'm not telling anyone to give me money. Do you understand? For me, God is going to multiply my what? Money. <laughs> like he's saying. Okay? But God is telling you that if you want him to multiply your finances, okay? All right? You have to sow. You have to sow seed. You have to be a giver. Okay? You have to be what? You have to be a giver. All right? Now, someone who gives money on, on Sunday, okay, first January, okay, and then they give again in May. Then, end of the year, end of their seed, special seed. Yeah? Special seed, end of the year. Then, first January, special seed for the year. All right? That person is not a giver. Yes, they gave, but they are not givers. Hallelujah. So a giver is someone who delights in giving. Every opportunity that God sends them to give, okay, they take a hold of it and they give. Glory be to God. It doesn't matter how little they have, okay, their joy is in being a blessing, solving a problem. Helping the brethren. Glory be to God. Year in, year out. Whether they see returns or they don't, they just love giving. Glory be to God. Amen? And for that person, one day, okay, lulivalumu, the harvest will come. Glory be to God. I'm not sure in what form it will come, Okay, but I know that one of the forms in which will come, it will be increased finances. Glory be to God. You know these things. Eh? I'm not saying anything new. Okay, and you know that I'm saying them with a pure heart. Eh? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Okay, Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Okay, these two Sundays, we're not going to read a lot of us. Eh? scriptures because just testifying of the goodness of God eh, is scripture. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay? So Galatians chapter 6 from, from verse 9 it says let us not grow weary or let us not grow tired while doing good for in due season we shall reap. In due what? Season. And that promise is to those who don't get tired of giving. Alright? 
It is to those who don't get tired of what? It is not a promise to someone who gave in January and they give again in February, or rather in December. It is to those who don't get tired. They gave in January, they gave in Feb, they gave in March, they gave. They gave. They are givers. Okay, it says in due season, they shall what? They shall reap if they don't lose heart. Okay? I read a story, oh, I had David, uh, Bishop David Oedepo, a Nigerian, okay, say that one time someone asked him that when will I get my harvest? Okay? And then he says, <laughs> the Bible says, in due season. So when is due? Season. That's up to God. Okay? But Pastor Moses, when I am can he say no? You told us about giving since I came to this church. Hmm? And yeah. Hmm? Okay? But when is my harvest? When is due season? Okay? The harvest will come in due season. When is due season? You go ask God. Hallelujah. Don't ask what? <laughs> Don't ask about to bow and see. You go and ask what? Omunene. Hallelujah. You, and by the way, God is willing to answer those questions. Hallelujah. If you're really serious with an answer, eh? you're serious for, for an answer, for a response. God really has no issues with answering that one. Yeah. Also, even asking him why I have, you know, I haven't seen a harvest all this time. Take those things to God. Eh? You'll be amazed. God will answer them. Because you see, he has to defend his word. Okay? Jesus said, give and it shall be given back to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, will be put into your now, when you are a real giver, all right, and you don't see what Jesus said happening to you, don't just say, Mukama Yamani. Don't fear to ask. Go, go ask him. Do you understand? Ask him. I've done those things in the past. Ask God, man, and I will get responses in dramatic ways, eh? okay, and they're always in dreams. Hallelujah. And God explains to you, you know, he's like, you know, and man, eh? next day you're like, now, who to give? By the way, you, get, you, you take these things to God. Take them to God. But there are some of you, who, as in, God will just what? We just say, God, I've blessed you so much now, you just what? Here you go away. We're going to encourage my, what? The others who want to stop giving because they're not seeing what? Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay? Glory be to God. Okay, you see, basically, if you continue giving, you give, you give, you give. One day, a harvest will come. One day, what? A harvest will come. One day, a harvest will come. You know, it is like concerning salvation. Eh? Hmm? Okay? If you're born again and you continually do good, hmm? do you know what you're going to get eventually? Eternal life. Hmm? I know you have eternal life in Christ Jesus, but you forever be in the kingdom, you'll be raptured at some time. What, you understand? Eh? Okay? However, okay, or at the same time, if you're a Christian and you continually do evil, one day, okay, one day, you're going to end up in hell. You're going to reap. Hallelujah. One step door is saved, like you all know. It's not true. It's stupid. It's a doctrine of demons taking many Christians to hell. Hmm? 
Christians have been told, don't worry how you live. You got saved when you're six years, you're kawa, you're fine. Okay? Hallelujah. Okay? When you continually do good, something good is bound to happen to you. And the reverse or the opposite is also true. If you continually do evil, eh? Okay, something bad, eh? okay, even before you die, something bad will happen to you. And pray that that something bad happens before you die. So that it can what? Wake you up and you stay up and you don't end up in hell. Glory be to God. Romans chapter 2, okay, remember, this is just an, this is just an example, okay? Romans chapter 2, verse 6, okay, it talks about God. Who will render to each one according to his deeds? Eternal life to which people? Okay, to those who by patient continuance in doing good, okay, seek for glory, honor, and immortality. So those who continually do good, Christians who continually do good, what are they going to get eventually? Eternal life. Okay? They're going to get glory, honor, and immortality. Verse 8. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, okay, they are going to get indignation and wrath, the wrath of God. Okay? God still has some wrath. Amen? Tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Jew first and also of the Greek but glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. Hallelujah. There is no what? Partiality with God. Okay, so this is just an example. We are talking about giving and God multiplying your money. Okay, Galatians chapter 6 Okay, verse 19 says, if you continually do good, if you don't get tired of doing good, okay, being, of being a blessing to them, oh, brethren, in due season, you shall reap if you do not lose heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of the problems Christians face, okay, remember I said some, okay? I haven't said all, okay? Some of the problems Christians face is uh, they're just reaping eh? all the evil they have been continually doing. You understand? Eh? Christians do evil stuff, man. Eh? In fact, there are some people who are like, when I need someone to do for me something, if I get to hear that balokole, and now these people are balokole. But when they get to know that, hey, this guy wants to do this work for me, they are like, forget it. You understand? Eh? Because there's a, anyway, there are people who have had bad experiences with Balokole. Balokole is still their cement at construction site. <laughs> you understand? Eh? Balokole don't want to work. Then they are fired. Then they are like they're being persecuted. Hmm? But God didn't give you that job. What? To go, what? To spend time praying. He gave you the job to pray. Ra rather, to work. After you work, go home and pray. Hallelujah. Hmm? You understand? So, Baruch a very man, eh? very... Of course, not all of them, eh? but there are many who are dishonest. Eh? Okay? Dennis has an experience, you know? <laughs> Dennis and Christian, rather, Prophet Dennis Mujimba and Mrs. Mrs. Christian Mujimba. But locally, you sit in a fellowship, five, like a fellowship at home, and there's a locally whose intent is to hammer all of you. You know? Do you understand? Balokole. And these guys, they don't miss Sunday services. Because if they miss, then they, they lose out or not on getting the clients they're going to hammer. 
So when they come to church, they have just come to what? To scan which fool, what? Uh, which undiscerning individual. But don't be like that, people. Hallelujah. Hmm? That applies also to women, you are a wife, eh? okay? Your husband is not saved. The, the Bible says that, you know, you can win over your husband, not with words, eh? but by your good behavior. Hmm? You're born again, you want to go with your husband to heaven. Hmm? You're like, mommy, wang, it again, I'm Very good. Hallelujah. But then she starts to talk to you about food, what? Then you start to tell him human rights, women's rights. Do you understand? No. <laughs> okay. And you can't show him those things in, this, in your Bible, which what? You're telling him about. Do you understand? Eh? Be like Sarah. The Bible says, who called Abraham what? Called Abraham what? Called Abraham what? Sarah called Abraham. Mukama wange. It makes more impact when you say it in Uganda. Hmm? Mukama wange. You say it in what? Mukama wange. Ah. Hmm? Who else should what? And you, you understand? A woman. Hmm? <laughs> God wants us to be eh, the women of today. God wants them to be like her. She called the husband Lord. Hmm? Called him what? Mm. Hallelujah. Definitely, Abraham, most of the cattle and the sheep and the goats and the whatever they had. Okay? Yeah, were through. Abraham, okay? God blessed the couple who threw the man, okay? However, the Bible doesn't say that only call your husband Lord if you, if uh, he has more dime than you. He just says, you want to win him over to the Lord? As in, be like Sarah, be like, you know, your mother, Sarah. Call the husband what? Hmm? Hallelujah. There's a tribe in Uganda. Okay? Someone was telling me about that tribe. So this someone, actually it was Elvis, eh? before he fell, eh? okay? So he, he told me that he had a pastor years ago in Entebbe. And that pastor was a Mufumbira. Okay? He was called Pastor Mogisha. You know? So he told Elvis and some other preacher, okay, when they were young, okay, told them that you guys, eh, you young men, never fool with women from this tribe, a certain tribe in Uganda. Do you understand? Eh? Like if you're married eh, or what, and then you, you, know, you start to, like, to cheat. He said, those women are deadly. Okay? They will treat you in such a manner that man, eh, you might abandon your what? Your wife. Because they have that touch of Mukama Wang, you understand? Eh? As in, you know, eh, they make a man feel like man, eh, you know, eh? he stays in Lubo or what? Kumbe is in Katanga, man. Do you understand? This pastor warned these guys eh, that never fall with those what? Eh. Okay? So you can see, I guess they have some understanding eh, of, uh, of these things, of godly things in their messed upness. Hallelujah. Single women, are you hearing? Hmm? You're going to get a harvest of a good man. Okay? If you don't get weary or well doing. Okay? You want money, you're sowing. Eh? One of the ways God might give you a harvest is by giving you a loaded man. Hallelujah. The man comes with the what? The harvest. 
Hallelujah. He's a handsome man. He has some in his what? In his hand. Glory be to God. <laughs> Have you heard of that? What a handsome man is? Apparently, some people say it's a man who has some in his hand. Deep revelation. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, do you understand? Yeah? Now, you have, uh, when, before you get there, okay, learn now how to treat the man in a godly way. Because you are a godly girl. Don't be just godly with giving. Glory be to God. Okay? Hallelujah. Let the man be what? Know that your man is your Lord. Okay? Okay. If you don't want that, you're like, hey, scripture, what? Okay? Let me give you another one. Your husband is your head. You know that one. Okay? The husband is the head of the wife, just as Christ is the head of the church. And the Bible doesn't say that you are the neck. Okay? There is a certain big pastor in Kampala. Hmm? In Kampala. She began to do those women's things, women's conference, uh, women's, you know, eh? Those things are not evil. Okay? But sense, spiritual sense should be said there. Women's go, you know, eh? So this great, yeah, you know, woman organized a conference what, years ago. And sometimes she, she, she would even say this rubbish in a service like this when what? There are men and what? Women. She said that, you know, women, okay, yes, they are, your husbands are the heads. But you are the neck. You turn the head to whatever what? you want it. <laughs> no, that is stupidity. That is evil. There's no scripture where it says that you are the, the neck. Okay, you're like, be the head, but I'll turn you to where what? Yeah, as in, so who is the boss? The neck. But the Bible doesn't say that. Glory be to God. Do you know what witchcraft is? Do you know what witchcraft is? According to Rick Joyner, witchcraft is making or trying to, trying to make someone do something, but not by the Holy Spirit. Manipulation is witchcraft. Hmm? Manipulating someone to do something eh? against their will, you know, eh? it is witchcraft. Because you don't using God. Do you understand? Okay? So you imagine you organize a conference, Christian women. You want to raise godly women. And then you tell them garbage like that. Now, we talk about church. Now we're not what? We're talking about the women's movement thing. Church Christians. That's, that's not good, ladies, Okay? Hmm? Say amen. amen. When the man doesn't come, then you go ask God, God will just keep quiet. He'll tell you, but I mean, I told your pastor to tell you why you're not what? Why the man is not coming. Huh? Because you want, you're there just being nice, then when he comes, you harass my son. <laughs> harass man. Harass, my son. Harassment. Is it harass or harass? Uh, Why well, just pretending, being nice, you know? Eh? Continually pretending. <laughs> mm? <laughs> you know, eh? Then, man, eh? Find a guy is married, he's like, man, God, but really, really, really? Huh? Say so be good, people. Be what? Be good. Okay? But I didn't prepare to say all these things. Okay? I'm just, I'm flowing. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Then someone say, but even the man, you even the man, you tell you know. Eh? No, I don't feel the flow in that one. <laughs> you understand? Eh? And this is what they call godly, really godly preaching. You just don't. Ideally, in this season, I should be telling you about how God is going to take care of you in the difficult economy. You understand? Eh? But you don't do that. Eh? You just don't see what is in the papers, then you preach. You understand? Eh? You have to be led by God. Glory be to God. Imagine in these difficult times, God, to LAT, he's talking about sowing. You understand? So that man, as in really God? Then in the midst of that, now he starts to what? To alarm his girls. Hallelujah. But I'm telling you, you've been sowing. You're asking, you know, how, you know, I'm, one, you know, the reasons how your harvest might come, okay, it might come with a man. Okay? Then God will hit, will have hit two birds with one stone. Two what? With one stone. Hallelujah. But start now to learn how to handle God's man. Hallelujah. Hmm? One of the first things you're going to do is to first run away from your friends who are what? Who are active, you know. Eh? <laughs> and let me leave this thing alone. Eh? But I've told you, glory be to God. But God, now, those are yours. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen? So, if you continually so, if you continually give one day, something good is going to happen. God will multiply your money. Hallelujah. Hmm? One, of the, one of the reasons why people grow up and they, they're not givers, eh? okay? It's because, it's because of their parents. Hmm? Hmm? Kids, you know, they start when they're young. Their parents teaching them not to give. Hmm? They give you grab or money to go to Buddha. Then there is a whole, you know, eh? a book. Okay? Instructing you how not to what? How not to give your stuff. That's how it starts. You know, a guy was being mean in Budo. Hmm? In wherever, old Kampala, Makai, you know. How, how do you expect them to be with generous when they get a job? Man, eh? it's, it's hard. It, it takes God. Okay? It takes God. Especially when they grew up in, in, in places like Lubowa. Where every man for himself. You don't know your neighbor. When you run out of salt, you cannot knock at your neighbors. You know, eh? when the matchbox, the sticks are over, man, you have to suffer throughout. As in, eh? Because this one, is, you know, and it closes at a certain point. You understand? Eh? Those characters somehow, unless God touches them. Eh? Because I remember back in the day in school, Hey, those guys, man, were not what? Sharing. Eh? Hey. For them, they, this whole thing of socialism was not in their vocabulary. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hmm? I'll end with this. Okay? Psalm 120, what? I think it's Psalm 126. Psalm 126 says, He who continually Please read with me that word. He who what? Continually. Continually. Okay? He didn't get tired. When he gets tired, he asks God, Energize me. Hallelujah. Okay? He who continually goes forth weeping. Because at times it's hard. You're like, what? Anyway. The Bible says, 
The girls first continually weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless, as in shall certainly, shall for sure, come again with rejoicing, bearing his shields with him. What he sowed would have been multiplied. Okay? But realize the key word there is continually. Glory be to God. It is continually. Okay? Continually. Do good. Okay? Okay? Hallelujah. You don't get weary of well doing, for in due season you shall reap if you don't have, if, if you don't lose heart. And Paul in that scripture, he continues to say in verse 10 and say that therefore, as we have opportunity, so you make use of all the opportunities which God sends you to be a blessing. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That is how God will multiply your money. If you want your money to be multiplied, give God the opportunity to do it. And you do it by being generous with what he has given you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. By the way, I'm telling the truth. Eh? There are things eh, which, rather not things, but money which I haven't handled. But I know one day it is coming. For those of you who have, who have been in LAT for, for, for years, eh, you know the problem, FPO, you know him. Eh? In fact, I was like, I think the Luboa issue, I think God is following up that FPO thing. You, you understand it? Eh? There's money which I haven't seen, but I know it's coming. Because he who promised is what? Is faithful. Glory be to God. So be generous, people. Be what? Be generous. Be givers. Okay? All right? Your money will be multiplied and you'll get many other blessings which money cannot buy. Hallelujah. Blessings which money cannot buy. Hmm? Like the blessing of wisdom. The blessing of good children. Do you understand? As in the things which money can't buy. But when you are a giver, those things come with the financial increase. Hallelujah. Amen. Last Adam Tabernacle, Christ for the Nations.